Before we get into today's Cowboys report, we are losing the subscriber battle against Eagles Now. That is our Eagles channel here at Chat Sports, narrowly behind Philadelphia. Let's round and say 200. We have a few more days left in the month to get there. If you haven't already, please hit that sub button. A, you'll get more free Cowboys videos, and we'll take down the Eagles as well. The offseason is here, and the sometimes wild rumors are flowing. Let's begin with Saquon Barkley, who I, I do think is maybe more of a feasible Cowboys target than he's ever been previously in his career, which, you know, kind of a low bar there. He has been linked to Dallas thanks to the tweeting of one former Cowboys wide receiver, Cole Beasley, who, by the way, was teammates with Saquon with the Giants. Cole tweeted out, quote, need you to go to Dallas Getting to run it up on your old team who disrespected you is rejuvenating, LOL, which I think Cole's talking about Dallas, or maybe it's about the Bills or whatever. Uh, also, the Cowboys, were, it's, just, it's just kind of ironic, I think, to a certain extent there. Uh, Saquon just responded with the laughing emojis, but that's not a denial. That is not a rejection of, nah, I ain't going to Dallas, which if you're doing it right from the agency perspective, the agent perspective, you don't want to do that. Now, Saquon has kept the door open to leaving the Giants this offseason, who I doubt will franchise tag him, given the cost being fairly expensive. Here's what Saquon said, uh, asked about playing for their team. Is, is that possible for you? He goes, yeah. I mean, it never crossed my mind until last year after I got tagged. Up until that moment, I really believed that I was going to finish my career as a New York Giant. You know, that was a goal of mine, and it's still in play. They know that. But once you get to this point, you go to your contract negotiation and you go to the tag process, you realize how much of a business it is. And I remember vets always tell me this and that. Uh, and I, I, I believe them, but you don't really know something until you go through it. So could I see myself in, a, in another uniform? Yeah, it's possible. The Cowboys obviously have a running back issue, along with offensive line issue and scheme issue. Tony Pollard, Rico Dowdle are both set to be free agents. Other four guys on the roster are not guaranteed anything by contract or impact in previous years. So the pinned comment of today's video is this, and we'll go more in depth on this here momentarily, don't you worry. But do you want the Cowboys to sign Saquon Barkley in NFL free agency? Why for yes and for no? Like I mentioned, it's the pinned comment, which means if the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage, head down there and go vote. Why for yes and for no? Barkley has been a little inconsistent in his time in the NFL, ups and downs. He was really great in 2019, by the way, which doesn't show up in the last four seasons. Uh, big play, explosive play guy. The, the line was obviously not very good with the Giants. Neither was the, uh, the quarterback play at all uh, in his time in New York. Offers third down value as well. If you're ranking the running back for, uh, free agents from a rushing and receiving perspective, you can make a very strong argument that Saquon Barkley is the best runner. And I think in the modern NFL, you, the current meta, I should say, the NFL, you want explosive plays. Barkley can deliver that for you on the ground and at times through the air as well. Now, money will be a factor here. Yeah, who could have seen that one coming? Uh, running backs don't have much of a shelf life. This is Barkley's by far his best chance to get a bag. So if he's, I would not blame him at all for saying, I'm going to chase the money. I'm going to go where I get the biggest contract possible. What that contract looks like, I don't know. Uh, the highest, unlike pretty much every other position in the game, the running back market does not continuously go up. This is the current six highest paid backs. And Alvin Kamara is at 15. He might get cut this offseason. Nick Chubb's coming off injury. Aaron Jones already restructured his deal once. He took a bit of a pay cut. He could get cut. And it's Miles Sanders down there. So I think the Jonathan Taylor number, $14 million per year, is probably what Saquon's going to want to try to find on the open market. Dallas will not pay him that. I would be pretty shocked if they did that. And they shouldn't want to either. I am a believer in don't pay your back. Because outside of Derrick Henry... All of the contracts that have been signed haven't actually gone that great by the end of it. There's not many guys like, ah, oh, yeah, that guy was worth a penny. Henry was. Barkley the tag. Jacobs the tag. Christian McCaffrey got traded. Alvin Kamara's numbers have plummeted. Dalvin Cook, Zeke Elliott, guys all got cut. Joe Mixon took a pay cut. Like, it's, the contracts haven't really worked out. And the market favors the teams in a pretty massive way, by the way. Derrick Henry, this is sort of by most 
uh, yards on the ground this year, by the way, so keep that in mind. Henry, Swift, Pollard, Barkley, other guys like Devin Singletary, Gus Edwards, Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler does not look like he's got much left in the tank. That's why no one traded for him. James Conner, Zach Moss. Those are six running backs who are going to be looking for new deals and want to be starters somewhere. Well, they're not all going to... They won't all reach free agency, but they won't all also get big-time money. And there aren't enough open, viable spots. Dallas has one of them. I think if they play their cards right and they are patient, they can find a really good running back on a value deal that might not end up being Saquon Barkley. He might get a little bit, a little bit more money. But is James Conner going to break the bank somewhere? I don't think so. And sign a good veteran and still draft somebody as well. It, or retain a Pollard or a Dowdle or whatever. You've got options at running back. So it's a fun idea. It's explosive. But I don't know if, if the balancing of the spreadsheet, the way Dallas likes to do, means it's in the cards. Who do you want as running back one next season? Sound off for me. Draft, free agent, player on the roster, trade, whatever. Get that player name for me in the comments. I am sure this one will go over well on top of that. How about bringing back Connor Williams? Cowboys Wire, USA Today subsidiary, uh, suggested it. And from a purely player perspective, he's better than what you got, whether you want to admit it or not. Williams had emerged as a top center in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins, which, to be blunt, I didn't think he was going to do. Uh, there were still some snapping issues, but he actually played very well uh, at center for the Miami Dolphins. Big red flag. Also coming off a torn ACL he suffered in December. Over the, the last two seasons, Biotish has about 500 more snaps because Williams got hurt this past season. Williams did, did allow one more sack. Massive differences, though, in the hits and hurries allowed. And when that's the case, it's almost always a quarterback issue. It means that the, the quarterback's taking some responsibility for some of those sacks. From a pass-blocking perspective, does favor Williams pretty significantly, even once you balance out the snaps played, etc. The run blocking grade, which, which is the average of all the grades and the snaps, so it's, it's not quite exact, but PFF doesn't keep you know, running grades overall, so estimation basically there, vastly in favor of Connor Williams. And I know Tom, he's a penalty machine. You guys kind of let one bad year of penalties decide the narrative of Connor Williams, who, who was a penalty boy, in 2021, he had 15 penalties, three of which were declined, by the way. Seven this past year, six in 2022, four, six, and five. You tell me which one is the outlier season. Is he more inclined to flags than Biotish? Yes. Does two or three over the course of a season really define you relative to the differences in the pass blocking and run blocking? No, I don't think so. So which one would you rather have as your center? TB, got to pick one, no cop-out answers. TB for Tyler Biotish or CW for Connor Williams. Now, my guess is both of these players end up ranking on the top highest paid. So let's look Williams off this list. He's a free agent. Kelsey might not be back. Jensen's been injured. So there's some, some asterisks there. But I wanted to include the high-end, low-end uh, markets anyway. Upwards of $13 million. I don't think either guy gets that. Six million dollars minimum is what you'd be paying, and I, I maybe the Eric McCoy uh, contract is what both players end up aiming for. I don't know if they get that though. Biotish is coming off an okay season, but he's probably going to command six to nine million dollars. Connor Williams comes torn ACL. Does, does, does he go the one year prove it route? And if you're Dallas, is that what you want? Do you want to go the one year prove it route at center, given the uncertainty coming off the ACL? When we saw Terrence Steele this past season at, at right tackle return to play, but not have the return to performance, uh, which is a, is, is a concern coming off the ACL. You know, we'll do the whole best shape of life season, I'm sure, but we've seen time and time again that it, there's a little bit longer gap to return to performance. So another offensive lineman coming off an AC, ACL tear scares me a little bit. I, I'm skittish of doing that again because it's burned the Cowboys previously. That's my trauma speaking. Maybe Williams will be just fine. Who knows? I, I think if he'd been healthy, he would have been too expensive for you. If he's not, if he's not fully healthy, ah, is that the route you want to go? Just makes things dicey. But from a pure player perspective, He's better than Biotis right now at center, which, again, I, I am surprised by and happy for Connor that he made that happen. Maybe just going the young draft route is a simpler path for Dallas. 
Speaking of the draft, we'll have more coverage for you here on the channel. So don't miss out. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. All right, we'll wrap up today's show with this conversation. As I'm sure some of you saw on social media, Jesse Holly says, among other things, he thinks Micah Parsons is the most selfish player uh, on this Cowboys team, which I have thoughts on. Uh, let's get to the quote from Jesse Holly first and foremost, saying, Micah Parsons, to me, is probably the most selfish player on this football team. One of the reasons Micah Parsons does not want to play linebacker, it's too much of a responsibility. Maybe it's just the youth in him. Micah doesn't want to study. Micah doesn't want to focus in. And I truly believe Micah wants to be great for Micah. Here's what Micah responded with. Y'all just want to get a reaction out of me. It's not going to work, LOL. I'm at peace, love. I will say I respect Micah for taking the high road. Uh, his m mother also sent it off on social media uh, because it's the mom strike back off season for the Cowboys for whatever reason. In general, there are a lot of things that we are allowed to be upset about as a fan base. It's 28 years of different reasons, different explanations, different excuses, same end result. This is not really one of them as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we, we, are, we are now just, we're just going to, 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 to the roster and coaching staff one by one saying it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Is there really any evidence that this team has asked him to play off-ball linebacker? They did give him some more snaps, what I call that linebacker role. I, I remember we dropped him into coverage and we all get mad about it, as we should do. Also, where is this he doesn't study evidence? Because I, I, I have a real issue in when we're going with this, is a, this would be a fact. Either he does or he doesn't study. We do not get to sit up here as media analysts going, oh, well, this is something that I believe. It's just my opinion. You can't be mad at me for it. That's not how this works. We can disagree on, ah, he's this ranking quarterback. He did this wrong, did that wrong. Whether or not a player puts in the study and the effort is a verifiable fact. We cannot say, I don't think he studies, and go, well, that's my opinion. Either you're right or you're wrong. And by the way, playing off-ball linebacker does not come down to just studying. It is not just an effort thing. Sometimes I think that we want to believe that these high-end special athletes, it comes down to how much they study. Instincts are instincts. You can work on them, you can grow on them, but sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. That's how this game works. You know, guys like Luke Keekley. Weren't, they were good athletes too. It wasn't just that they studied hard. Sometimes you're just built different at the position. Also, this idea that he's, that he's selfish, I think, is, is frankly over, over the line a little bit. We know that Micah Parsons busts his ass in the offseason. He's traded with Andrew Whitworth. He's met with Sean Merriman. Doesn't think the DeMarcus Ware stuff. He's helped train his young teammates. He's shown some stuff to guys like Damone Clark, to guys like Mozzie Smith. He has said he wants impact over sacks. It is not selfish to sit there and absorb double teams and triple teams times as a pass rusher and free up other guys. That is the opposite of selfish. He's added Nass to help first to run. Frankly, there are reps of him being a very good run stopper at defensive end. Is he ever going to be a Tank Lawrence player? I don't know. You know, sometimes Tank Lawrence has that intuition of knowing where the run play is going to go. Maybe he develops it. Maybe he doesn't. The edge impact is significantly greater than the linebacker impact. By the way, final thought here. Did we ever accuse Zach Martin of being selfish for him not wanting to play right tackle? Do we ever, do we ever, maybe this year, we're like, oh, your, your, your right tackle's having some issues. Therefore, it's Zach Martin's fault he's not playing right tackle? That's the exact same argument that's being made about Micah Parsons. You had a linebacker issue. No doubt about it. You, your top two guys got hurt. Your number three guy, Damone Clark, never really materialized. Trying to blame the best player for the linebacker woes doesn't really make sense when he's a pass rusher. That's what he does best. I'm trying to make him my, the best player for my team. That's a defensive end right now. Frankly, I think this whole conversation is kind of lame. I'm not trying to be mean to people right now, but we've managed to just invent an argument and invent a storyline that the coaches and players don't believe. So I think it's, it's I get that we're all down bad as fans. I think it's kind of an embarrassing argument.